the DSC working principle is here shown. Two pieces of glass which are conducting on the internal sides are covered on one side by uh, titania nanoparticles and on the other uh, side by platinum or in our case uh, carbon. And uh, since titania is white we need some dye to harvest also the light which uh, falls in the, in the visible region. The electrical contact is closed by the presence of a liquid or a gel which contains an electrolyte. So let's see what happens. Uh, when, the, uh, when the sun sends its light to the cell, one ray makes uh, an extraction of the electron from the upper level of the dye to the first uh, unoccupied level, which is uh, higher in energy than the conduction band of the titania. So it can inject its electron inside the conduction band of titania, which uh, can go through the different particles until it can reach the FTO, so that uh, is in practice the conductive portion of the glass. When the electron touches uh, the conductive uh, side of the glass, it can go through the external circuit until it can light a lamp, uh, make some uh, engine work and so on. And it can go back on the other side to the cathode, where with the help of uh, high surface carbon in our case, or platinum uh, nanoparticles, it can be um, uh, delivered to iodine, which is reduced to iodide, and the iodide can go through the electrolyte uh, until it can uh, deliver the electron to the, um, to the dye. In that case, the dye that uh, at the beginning was oxidized is reduced and can start working again for another cycle. Let's now see how we can produce manually our uh, dye-sensitized solar cells. First of all, we can see here all the materials we need. Uh, titania powder, uh, an acid solution at pH 3-4, ethanol, glasses, conductive glasses, a removable tape, a mortar, scissors, a spatula, a pasteur pipette and a cylinder. We will have to prepare a titania paste with the, the titania and the uh, aqua solution of an acid uh, that can be deposited on the glasses which, which will be uh, deposited onto the bench. Before starting, all glasses should be inserted into um, ethanol, now we will introduce two, to clean them from every dirty materials like uh, oils uh, used for production or simply the fingerprints uh, if you touch uh, with our fingers. Normally, since now, we'll have to keep these uh, glasses just only from the edges. After a few seconds of washing, we can extract our uh, glasses with the help of a spatula, uh, deposit it onto the paper to drain uh, the ethanol, and after we can keep uh, with, uh, within our fingers with a piece of paper to clean them and uh, to prepare them for the further deposition of titania. We can check the conductivity of those glasses before preparing them for the deposition of titania. We can see that they are all conducting on the sides exposed to the air.
After having checked the conductivity of those glasses, we can put them in this way on, uh, on the desk. We will have to switch the side of the lowest glasses because uh, these will be only used to uh, support the deposition. Now we will fix uh, the glasses on the bench. We will use a removable tape uh, in order to cover the first 3 to 5 millimeters of the first upper glass. After we will join the two glass pieces and we will join them also with the two pieces of tape for about two uh, millimeters wide uh, contact. We can see now the same process from the top and we can appreciate uh, how much of the glass uh, border is kept under the scotch because this will be one of the two contacts of the final solar cells. So we can also see what uh, is the way in which we can uh, uh, firmly uh, keep in contact uh, the the two glasses on both sides. Now we can start by using a mortar. We can introduce into it our 3 grams of titania powder. It's a lot, so we can see that is, uh, uh, this powder is very finely divided and, and uh, it's a lightweight powder. We can add with a pipette just a few drops at a time of uh, the acid solution and start grinding. We have not to be fast in, way in uh, doing this, uh, this work. We simply have to grind to make this uh, uh, finely divided powder to collapse into a minimal volume and to become during time a paste. The use of an acid solution having pH around at 3-4 is needed because the titania in its surface is simply showing a lot of hydroxyl groups and the, the presence of an acid will protonate some of them making it possible for the different uh, small particles to stay away from each other. So we can make a deposition of a paste in which there are no specific aggregates. So the last goal of our preparation is to have a paste which doesn't show any aggregation, nor at the macroscopic and the microscopic level. We can see after a few minutes that uh, the volume of the titania is diminished and we can uh, also appreciate that uh, the consistent of this uh, material is some, uh, some sticking material that will become more and more viscous after, and after it will reduce its viscosity at the, at the end of the procedure giving a, more or less the consistent of a cream for hands.
At a certain point, the viscosity of the system will change. We will see that the paste will be sticky and from time to time we'll, uh, we see that uh, the viscosity uh, is diminishing. When the viscosity is uh, still reduced, we can see that uh, the, our, um, our paste is less viscous and we can also um, add a bit of liquid to improve uh, the state of the past that becomes uh, easier to, to be grinded, like this. At that time, we can also see that we need to remove from the pestle and from the mortar walls part of our paste, otherwise it will be left away from the homogenization. This is crucial to have an only an homogeneous material. Check the consistency of the paste. It is better to put the pestle onto the mortar and to try to lift up. You should not notice any movement of the mortar when you raise up the, the pestle, like in these images. Likely, at the end, the paste has the correct uh, consistency, like a cream for hands. And af uh, after this, we can uh, prepare for the deposition. Now we can start with the deposition and we can take part of uh, the material from the pestle or from the mortar, depending on which point you can find a good quantity of material, obviously by cleaning the spatula and the rod before doing the work. And we can deposit a reasonable quantity of this paste over the portion of the slide which is covered by the tape. After, we can take the clean road and we can use it like a razor blade over the, the glasses. 
this is a good deposition. Let's see a second deposition, which is quite good in one step and another one in a few steps. Now we can better appreciate the state of uh, two of these depositions. After 30 minutes we can remove the tape and we can keep uh, the upper slide for the cell. The lower slide can be uh, polished, can be cleaned by scratching with paper and after with paper wetted with ethanol. The cleaning with the paper wetted with ethanol is essential to prepare those slides for the next role they will have to do, which is the role of the counter electrodes in the final cell, which is prepared on the next day. Here are our slides just before sinterization at high temperature. The sinterization of titania onto the glasses is obtained by using a high temperature furnace, which will be brought to uh, 450 degrees in a time of 50 minutes, and this temperature will be maintained for half an hour. After that, the system will be switched off and will continue to go to room temperature uh, very slowly. The day after we can recover the glasses and these are the final glasses uh, with the sinterized titania. Every glass is put into a beaker and the solution of dye will be used to dip the single glass into a different dye. Now we are ready to make the dipping of every glass into a different dye. We will use specifically uh, a dye which is natural, which is simply blueberry. Another dye which is the dye we produced, the merocyanin, and a red dye And finally, a blue dye, which was added also by, uh, with the some compound, which is useful to avoid aggregates. Now we will dip every glass with a specific dye, the blueberry, the yellow one, the merocyanin, the red dye, which is a uh, dye from our research lab and after also another dye from our lab which is a blue it's a squarine but added with some anti-aggregating compound. Since we are working with ethanol solution or water solution we cover all these um, because with the parafilm, with the sheet, to avoid evaporation, we store them in the dark. After one night uh, in the dark, we can see our glasses 
and we can see now also better from the top. They uh, resulted to be colored consistently in different color that obviously are depending on the kind of color, uh, dye we have uh, used. The glass is extracted from the beaker with the help of a spatula and deposited onto a piece of paper. Uh, the, the liquid is uh, um, eliminated by uh, using the, the paper but never touching the, the glass to avoid scratching the, uh, the titania. After a few times uh, more or less uh, our glass is, is uh, dry, nearly dried and after it can be put in a uh, uh, beaker containing simply ethanol and uh, also washed and uh, drying is uh, repeated again. The scope of this last uh, operation is to remove uh, the particles or the molecules of the dye which are not uh, uh, sticking and they are not attached to directly to titanium but simply absorbed because these are not working for the DSC only the molecules that are attached firmly with the carboxyl group onto titanium will be able to inject electrons in for the DC, DSC uh, performance At last, these are uh, all uh, our dyed glasses. The light blue dye was so diluted that in practice it did not uh, uh, dye so much our glass. Glasses are finally covered to protect them from light. The glasses uh, we saved uh, during the deposition of titania can be recovered, washed again in ethanol to prepare the uh, electrodes, the counter electrode, uh, by covering it with the carbon. Now we are ready to prepare the, our cells. We need uh, two clips, an electrolyte, uh, the, uh, the dye, the glass, and finally the, uh, the clean glass uh, which will be used to prepare the counter electrode by putting some uh, graphite onto it. First of all we need to uh, discover what is the conductive uh, side. Okay. Once we have determined the, the, the correct side we can uh, use our pencil to cover it with a layer of graphite, but we have to save a linear uh, space like uh, the one we have uh, just shown on the dyed uh, glass. Once we have quite colored, but not extensively, is not needed to make it uh, to come uh, to become black completely. Okay. Uh, with on all the side of this glass apart from the, the layer we told that uh, is left uh, not covered we can continue with the procedure okay we can see how this glass it, uh, is appearing we will compose the cell by putting one side, one conductive side, the dyed one and the, uh, the one with graphite, one over the other, leaving the two clean sides uh, outside, one for each side. This will be for us the, the typical 
points of contact for the circuit. Now we can close the cell by using two clips, one for each side on the, on the sides with respect to the two points of contact for electrical circuit. And just after we have closed the system, we will see the aspect of our final cell. Once the cell is complete, we still need to put the electrolyte, which is a liquid, normally acetonitrile or or uh, high boiling solvent, like in this case, glycol, ethylene glycol, in which uh, 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 iodide salt, normally potassium iodide and uh, iodine, are uh, inserted into it. So we can see that by keeping the keeping the, the cell in this condition we can uh, remove for a while our uh, clips to help uh, the, the liquid to enter better the space in between the two cells uh, uh, where we can find the two point of contact should be cleaned very well because uh, the presence of liquid can put a cell in short circuit when we will uh, uh, we will attach it to the circuit. And now we can appreciate the final cell. Now we can show the measurement system that we can use. First of all, we have a lamp which will illuminate our cell, which will be connected to those two clips that are connected in series with this multimeter, which is a resistant variable resistant with this knob for high resistances which can be switched on or off. And after we have these switches, single switches that can modulate a low resistance from 0 to 680 that can be inserted easily as shown but we leave them to zero at the first time these cables are connected with a multimeter which works for measuring the intensity and the other multimeter here shown will measure the potential because we can see it is positioned in parallel now we can see what to do First of all, uh, we have to connect uh, and we can see that we can use uh, no gloves because there are no more necessary. We connect the two connections with the grey portion of the uh, crocodile joint, but uh, the green and uh, the grey portion should touch the, uh, the conductive portion of the glass. So more or less we, we have to put our system like this. We simply have to uh, leave our cell in position and firmly attach it with some removable tape that can avoid uh, unwanted movements during the characterization so we can repeat and go back and forth with, uh, with our resistances. Uh, often it's better also to, to firmly connect uh, with, the, um, with the bench also the, the connectors. Now we can switch on the knob section and rotate it from the highest to the lowest resistance. When we get the last value, we will switch off this knob and we will make able the left part when you have several switches. And we will start from highest, from the highest going to the lowest resistance. This permits to see what happens when we reduce the resistance from the highest to the lowest value, uh, seeing the, the current to be produced uh, from zero to the highest value and uh, obtaining the typical uh, intensity versus volt as a characterization for the cell.
now we have switched uh, off the knob and uh, the left panel is active. We will uh, simply add one resistance uh, at a time uh, and we will register a continuous decrease of resistance and a continuous uh, decrease of potential and uh, consequent uh, current. So we have nearly finished the characterization. Here we can see the raw data reported as a, a microampere versus millivolt. The same data can be reported as a current density versus potential. The current density is obtained by dividing the raw current data by the area of the cell. Data can be fitted with a polynomial of 4 degree. By multiplying the current density by the voltage, we can obtain the power. So from the previously fitted curve, we can obtain this curve which express the power versus the voltage. The maximum power obtained here divided by the theoretical power that the cell can deliver will give us the field factor. So we have nearly finished the characterization. Thanks for watching!